Yeah, when the lineups first came out, we said Sunday lineup, five homers for that Sunday lineup, and now a big road trip the Milwaukee Brewers embark on. We'll get to that next here on Locked on Brewers. You are Locked on Brewers, your daily Milwaukee Brewers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Yeah, when we say the Sunday lineup, it's kind of a thing that uh, we used to talk about on WSSP, the old Sunday lineup uh, when the Brewers on a Sunday would back Craig Council third. Uh, you know, they, the lineup would be just totally different from the other six days of the week. It was like they'd win on a Friday or Saturday, and then you know, instead of going for the sweep, they'd throw some Sunday lineup out there, giving everybody a rest. That's where the term Sunday lineup comes. Yet the Brewers uh, break through that wall, and they have a 10-2 win over the Pittsburgh Pirates with that Sunday lineup. Good to have you along. Chuck Freeman here, Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. Big nine-game road trip. We're going to get to that coming up here in a little bit. Contreras, MVP numbers. Gasser does it again. Ortiz on fire. All that coming up next here on Locked On Brewers. The show is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time. Download the Game Time app. Create an account. Use the promo code Locked On MLB. Twenty bucks off your first purchase. Terms apply. Game Time. All right. My name is Chuck Freeman, longtime sports ta- caster here in the state of Wisconsin, sports talk show host, and proud host of Locked On Brewers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. You everydayers out there who download the app, Google, Spotify, Apple, uh, I should say the podcast, download the podcast every day, uh, Google, Spotify, Apple, wherever you get your podcasts, we are there, the number one Brewers podcast on the re- on the internet for a reason, because you great Brewer fans out there, and of course, YouTube, our growing YouTube page, uh, go to YouTube, search Locked on Brewers, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, that'll alert you every time we drop an episode. Follow me on Twitter as well. Chuck Freeman, F-R-E-I-M-U-N-D. Got some comments to read, both that were mentioned here on YouTube and on Twitter. I'm going to start doing a little bit more of that. I don't think I do enough of that, but we're going to talk more about that. All right, that Sunday lineup that we're talking about with the Milwaukee Brewers, that Sunday lineup, you know, when I'm talking about Ortiz batting third, Sanchez batting cleanup, Perkins batting fifth, Monasterio sixth, Owen Miller seventh, Churio eighth, Freelick ninth, you know, Contreras leading off, and Adamas in the two hole, I don't have any problem with. But Ortiz, Sanchez, uh, San, uh, Sanchez, and Perkins, you know, Sanchez, Sanchez in the cleanup spot, and then you know Ortiz in the three hole. I look at and Ortiz is on fire. Uh, they rested Yelich today. Uh, they gave him a, a day. A uh, Terang was in the lineup, and Hoskins, of course, is on the injured list. So that would be the Sunday lineup. But it responds. They respond with five home runs in this ten two win. Freelich goes three for four, uh, two days in a row now. He's homered. Uh, Will Contreras got things rolling early on with a three-run blast after the Pirates had taken a one nothing lead, and the Brewers were on their way, trouncing. I feel like these afternoon games, these midweek afternoon games, it's just like bet it all on the Milwaukee Brewers. You know, just, <laughs> just go on the Milwaukee Brewers because they win. No matter what happens on Tuesday, Wednesday, I feel like the or Tuesday or, or, or Monday, uh, either that Wednesday or Thursday afternoon game, in most cases, I think it's been a Wednesday afternoon game, the Brewers have uh, exploded at least at home for a victory. They got a few road games on getaway day as well, uh, a few road victories. Um, but, yeah, solid win, took two or three. I said this last night in the podcast, that Brewers minus 130. Are you kidding me? Huh? What am I missing here? Gas are on the mound? Um, now, he didn't give up five hits over the first three innings, but looked fantastic again. Now, we'll talk about him here in a little bit. But the offense was there. Contreras in the middle of this lineup are bad at two. Uh, but, you know, he's an MVP candidate. He's an MVP, the three-run home run. Uh, he's reached base in 40 of 43 games he's played in. Second in the league in batting average. First and run scored. Uh, I feel like in the heart of every rally or starting it or ending a rally in a good way for the Milwaukee Brewers is Will Contreras, MVP. His brother, Wilson, even put on Twitter, said, proud of you, big brother. Good for him. Uh, Wilson, 
tipping his cap uh, to the rival Milwaukee Brewers, but his brother is playing great baseball right now and it was just carryover for last year. There is no let up in Will Contreras. He just continues to rake, rake, rake. You feel like every time he goes up there, how many Brewers have you felt like that over the years where you feel every time he's at the plate, he's going to get a hit? I felt that way about Yelich a few years ago. And, of course, the great Paul Molitor, the all-time greatest brewer ever, I felt that about. Cecil Cooper way back in the day. Ryan Braun, obviously. But there's not too many guys. And I'm not putting Contreras in that category just yet. But I'm just saying, every time he comes to the plate, especially at a clutch spot, you think that Will uh, is going gonna, is gonna to come up with a base hit. Now, I didn't feel that way about him last year. He was the offensive MVP last year. And he had a great year, but he's come to a point with me where I've just come to expect that guy's going to come through in the clutch, deliver in the clutch, base hits, base hits, base hits, playing every day, whether it's catcher or DH, he is a true iron man as well. As I've always said, you can't take him out of the lineup. You can't take him out of the lineup. He is that good. All right. <laughs> Gasser, two starts allowed his first earned run. Uh, First Milwaukee Brewer pitcher in team history to win his first two games in his first two appearances. And that says a lot. First two appearances, he wins his first two games. First time it's ever happened. I'm surprised. No one has done it before, but Gasser is the first one. And I see a lot of I do see a lot of people on Twitter going all in on Gasser. Let's give him some time. Okay. Let's give these, I, I, like I say, I like them with young guys or anybody. I like to let it marinate a little bit. Sure, I'm all in at Hoskins, but he's got a track record of being really, really good. Uh, with Gasser, you know, some people are saying, well, why don't we trade? Why don't we trade Corbin Burns last year if we had Gasser ready to go? Uh, I mean, Gasser wasn't ready to go. If they thought he was ready to go, he would have made the roster coming out of spring training. So I have no problem. Uh, what you know they they took all the right steps he's on the team now um and we'll let's let's take it one game at a time with him let's not go out there and keep on looking well now we got two number one starters gasser and peralta i saw somebody put that on twitter not yet let it let a pitch and i'm not being negative somebody accused me of being negative today i'm not being negative for crying out loud my last podcast was entitled uh, the Milwaukee Brewers, they just keep on bouncing back. That's not being negative. But Gasser, let him keep on making a start every fifth or sixth day, whenever it is, and let him out there go out to produce. No pressure whatsoever. Um, you know, it's one of those things, too. Who else are the Brewers going to pitch? They had no choice to call up Gasser at this point. Had other guys been healthy, probably wouldn't be on the roster right now. But I'm glad he is. He's probably here to stay, but you know, I'm, am I willing to erect a statue in front of Amfan Field just yet? No. Is he the greatest left-hander in Brewer history just yet? No. He's made two starts, and he's pitched good in both of them. I'm going to let it marinate a little bit. Chuck Freeman here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. We are your team every day. I'm going to talk a little bit about. Churio Ortiz coming up here a little bit. Brewers made a roster move. Some of your comments, all that ahead here on Locked On Brewers. All you everydayers out there, thank you very much for following us along here on Locked On Brewers. And I know, you know, I see a lot of you guys at games and you ask me, man, how do you get good seats and all that? Where do you get your seats? Game time. Game time. You get seats right behind home plate, right behind the dugout through game time. Flash deals, zone deals. You know, you can pick out specific games, matchups, or whatever, games you want to attend, and view from all the seats that are available. You know, there's a seat there in Section 214. You click it on. You get a view of how your seat is going to be before you buy the tickets. There's no surprises. You get the lowest price guaranteed, events can event cancellation protection, job loss protection, all that, last-minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals, Easy to find, easy to buy tickets, MLB tickets, and not only cons not only uh, sporting events, but concerts, theater, it's all there on game time. You're going to want to go to game time 
and and check it out because they have 24 hour returns guaranteed. That means you can return your tickets within 24 hours from the time of purchase for a full credit to your game time account. No questions asked. Where could you get that? A 24 hour return guaranteed. Most places you buy those tickets, they're yours. Even if you make a mistake, there are yours, but not here. All in pricing shows your total upfront. Uh, game time is the place to go. And I tell you all the time, game time is where I get my tickets. Download the game time app now, create an account, and use the promo code locked on college for 20 bucks off your first purchase. It's locked on college. All you college graduates out there and more, uh, create the account. Locked on college, 20 bucks off your first purchase. Download the game time app today, and we'll see you at the ballpark soon. Check Freeman here. We're coming right back here on Locked On Brewers. Welcome back to Locked On Brewers. Check Freeman, your host here on Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. The Brewers are going on a nine game road trip. Uh, off day on Thursday, they leave. They're in Houston this weekend, Miami next week, Fenway Park over the weekend. For three, so three, three, and three. And then Monday, Memorial Day, seems like such a long time away, but they won't be home until a week from this Monday, Memorial Day against the Chicago Cubs. The first time the Brewers will see uh, Craig Council at AmFam Field as a member of uh, the Chicago Cubs organization. It's like a three o'clock start to Memorial Day. It's, you know, the, normally it's like an earlier start for the Brewers, but three o'clock, middle of the afternoon. Got to wait all, no, not all day, but a little part of the day on uh, Memorial Day. But you get your parties in and all that, or picnics, and then say, "Hey, I'm going to the game. I'm going to the Cubs and Brewers." Hopefully, there's a full house out there for that. I was uh, sitting in the stands on for Sunday's game. There was a guy sitting a row, couple of rows in back of me yapping how he's going to be all over Craig Council every time he gets out of the dugout. Gosh, I hope my seat is not. I hope my game time seat is is not near his. My goodness. He was, you know, he's one of these guys whose voice was talking over the, over the crowd at Miller Park or at AmFam Field. And, uh, you know, he's by himself and an older guy, but he was just bragging about how he was going to be all over council every time council comes out of the dugout. And again, God, I hope I don't have these seats in that because there's no protection about that. All right. Uh, Jackson Churio is fifth home run on Thursday. Uh, like we said, he's going to be up here for the foreseeable future. What happens? I think one of the questions is what's going to happen when Garrett Mitchell is activated? I think Churio is going to stay, okay? And I think Weimer, once he comes off the injured list, which you know should be soon, I guess, a little bit lower toward the end of the month with that mild sprain, I think Weimer's going down to AAA. He's going down to Nashville. I think that's the move they'll make. Uh, I think Unless they make a move with Weimer earlier, if he's if he comes off before Garrett Mitchell, I hear Garrett Mitchell is making great progress. I really do. Um, Ortiz, some of you guys came at me with Ortiz. There's one guy who came after me because I was very critical of the Corbin Burns trade. I said they didn't get enough. I think a lot of us didn't think the Brewers got enough in return for Ortiz, DL Hall, and Ortiz. Um, and I still don't, okay? The returns are early on Ortiz. He's hitting well. He's playing well. He shows. He's showing he belongs, okay? Um, but let's pump the brakes still on that. He might be great. I don't know. But let's pump the greats, uh, the brakes. I'm just saying, initially, the eye test, I thought the Brewers gave a little bit too much up for Corbin Burns. Ortiz is playing well. He deserves that everyday spot in the lineup, obviously, the way he's playing. But... Um, I'm not going to rush to the altar just yet and marry this guy into the Brewers organization. Okay. That's the thing is, you know, I, it's like, I remember back when the Brewers signed back in the day, Jeff Supon, and I was not for that move at all. Four years, 40 million. And I was torching the Brewers for three days after that move on the, on my sports talk show. And then he came back and he, Supan, Supon won his first four games of the Brewers People are coming all over me, all over me. Twitter was not alive back then, but people were all over me. Well, you know what? I let it marinate a little bit, and sure enough, by the end of that contract, we were done with Jeff Supon. That's for sure. Um, but Ortiz, Kate, just keep breaking. He was in the three-hole today. 
Never thought that was coming, but obviously Murph thought enough of him to put him in a three spot, and he's producing. Off day coming up. We're going to get to your comments. A Brewers made a move. We're going to get to that coming up here next here on Locked On Brewers. The show is brought to you in part by FanDuel. It's winner take all on the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. Although I had Oklahoma City on Wednesday night on the money line. I, I took them the other night at Dallas, and they came through. Thought they were going to take the 3-2 C- series lead, but Dallas jumped out early, survived every run, and Luka had a heck of a ball game. So, but, hey, new customers get 150 bucks in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet at FanDuel. 150 bucks bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and more. Visit FanDuel.com slash LockedOn. Make every playoff shot count FanDuel. America's number one sports book, but take advantage. All you new customers out there, get on all the action with uh, 150 bucks in bonus bets with any, with any winning $5 bet. FanDuel is America's number one sports books. The payouts are great, timely, and they don't mess around with you at all at FanDuel. All right, we're coming right back here on Lockdown Brewers. Welcome back to Lockdown Brewers. Chuck Freeman, your host here on Lockdown Brewers, part of Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, uh, coming up on the uh, Sunday night, we're going to be obviously recapping this series with the Houston Astros. Big series going into Houston. Big road trip. Like to see them come back at least five and four. They're eight, uh, nine games over the 500 mark right now. They're 26 and 17, nine games over, 26 and 17, a game and a half ahead of the Cubs who beat Atlanta. On Wednesday night, after earlier in the day, the Brewers 10 2 winners over Pittsburgh. All right. So the Brewers do send down Oliver Dunn. Not surprised that they did that. Uh, I thought this was going to happen a couple of weeks ago, but they finally sent him down. Chris Roller, who got in the game, kind of a journeyman minor leaguer, 27 years old, making his major league debut, um, got into the game. Um, I think his number was like 74 or something, 75, whatever it was. Um, feel, I feel like he still had his spring training jersey on. But Brewers make a roster move. Done. Going to go down into miters, get some seasoning, and I'm good with that. All right. Some of your thoughts on Twitter and YouTube. I'm going to take a quick break here. I'll take a quick drink of water here. Hold on. A uh, quick drink of lemonade, man. Oh. All right, here, let's see what you had to say. Um, uh, to the person who said the offense is not, they are tied for third in MLB in runs per game. This guy's obviously responding to somebody earlier. You know, a lot of back and forth that happens on YouTube, uh, just like Twitter. You know, you'll put comments down, you know, right under my video, there's a comment section. Feel free, because I, I, I read all the comments, but I want to read some of these. Uh, like I said, I don't think I've done enough of that. Uh, the Brewers just destroyed the Pirates, says Andy. If people can't say that, see that this year's offense is drastically better, they have not been paying attention or they don't understand baseball. Well, I think the Brewers are at it. They're, they're much better at the first base spot. Remember how much little production that they got out of first base last year? And Reese was giving them big-time production. Bowers has been giving them production at first base. It starts there. And, yeah, the production, the, the lineup, I feel, is better this year. You know, they were running Andrew, God bless Andrew Monasterio, but they were running him out there on a regular basis last year as an everyday player. Ortiz is an, is an upgrade, as it appears right now. Terang is better than last year. Adamas is better than last year. Yelich is better than last year, even though, you know, some people think he had a great year last year, but he's better than last year. Uh, Freelich slumping a little bit. Um you know, a few of these other uh, Will Contreras, as good as he was last year, he is better. So the offense is better this year because certain guys are having better years. And Hoskins at first base is better than anybody they've ever had at first base in a long time. Maybe since Prince Fielder. Probably since Prince Fielder, without question. So, yes, the offense is better than they were last year. Uh, Millie says... Uh, this is in response to me that I said the Brewers always bounce back. He says, if they always bounce back, then how come the Brewers have never won a World Series? What a lame title. Well, I meant they always bounce back this season. Of course, it has always ended poorly for the Milwaukee Brewers. We know that. We, yeah, if you're watching me on YouTube, 
that video, the, the wall on back of all the programs and the credentials and all that and the newspapers, every one of those have a bad ending for the Milwaukee Brewers. Yes, if you don't win the World Series, it always does have a bad ending for your team. And the Brewers have just one World Series appearance in 54 years, which I've said is pathetic. But I'm talking about this year's team. They've bounced back from every bit of adversity. you got to admit to that, that this team has, with the 12 or so, 12 to 14 players they put on in the injured list so far this year, they have bounced back from adversity in a heck of a way. And in first place, and right now fending off the Cubs, who've gone through their own injuries too. There's no doubt about that. But, man... You, you can't downplay at all. And I know, I think some of you try to downplay, with, not all, but some downplay to me what the Brewers have done so far. A 26 to 17, considering all the injuries, nine over the 500 mark, um, a game and a half. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Nobody thought this at this point, where we are, you know, coming up on Memorial Day here, following this road trip, uh, that this team was going to be nine games over the 500 mark. What was the over and under? 76 and a half wins. Okay. I did take that. I did take the over 76 and a half wins. I did think that was going to happen, but not much more over that. But let's let that marinate as well. But still, uh, this offense is better. And this team, I think this team is better than it was last year. It won the 92 games last year, but this team is better. Uh, let's see here. It appears Terrain can hit consistency at this level, hopefully with a little bit more seasoning and same maturation uh, comes along for sale. For some reason, they strike me as a budding Molitor duel. Uh, Terrain and Sal, uh, well, that's some, that's some high comparison. Yount and Molitor, we're talking two Hall of Famers and Molitor, one of the best hitters in Brewers history. Uh, Molitor, I feel, when he first came up, hit right away. Yount, it took a couple of years to get adjusted. It took him, if you look back at his numbers, he wasn't MVP. He wasn't a, a Hall of Famer in his first three or four years. He, he looked at it and, and he started off and he, you know, once he started hitting the weights and all that and hitting home runs by about 79 or so, 80, then he became, uh, and certainly by 82, looked to be a Hall of Fame candidate. But yeah, I don't want to put Sal and Terang into that category yet, but. Yount and Bolliter, that's like one of the best one-two punches in baseball history. Um, Andy says, I've had my doubts about Felix Bad, but would be thrilled to be proven wrong. Maybe this is a start of something big for him. Hopefully, hopefully Sal can keep it going. You know, he's got a lot of talent. Again, he's still still learning the ropes. He has not been in the major leagues but a year. Let's, uh, you know, he's going to do some maturation again, developing players while contending. That's a perfect combination. Uh, Joe says, uh, bummer for Hoskins. Bowers could certainly benefit. Hopefully Owen Miller hits better than his previous stint earlier this year. As for Hoskins, this could really hurt any momentum he built up. Um, Owen Miller's a journeyman. Okay. He had that little stretch last spring where he, where he hit well, but Miller's a journeyman. Uh, Bowers is certainly going to benefit and take advantage of it. This is an opportunity for him. He said the other day it was bittersweet opportunity for him, but He's not Reese Hoskins, but Bauer certainly is a nice fit right there. Bauer certainly is better than anybody anybody the Brewers put at first base last year. Jake Bowers is. Um, he speaks the truth, says, like the way fighting Pat Murphy is doing things right now. Uh, J.I. says, uh, in 2021, our bats fell asleep in August. Never mind an actual games against Atlanta. Same last year, but it was mid-September our bats fell asleep. Uh, win is a win. Keep it rolling with our young guys like Sal, says Greg. Uh, here's an interesting one. Monstru monstrous, monstrous says trade Devin Williams for a top tier starter and we have a chance. Trade Devin Williams. Doesn't appear that they want to give him a long-term extension. And you can't trade a guy who's on the injury list right now. Um, Technically you can, but... You know, I think you got to wait till he comes back. And I don't, the only way they trade Devin Williams is in July if they have just fallen off the planet and there's no hope. I, I said going into the season, if Williams got off, if the Brewers got off to a slow start and they were not in the pennant race whatsoever in July, they would trade Devin Williams. 
but I'm fully anticipating them being in the race in September and August and July. It's going to do it. Chuck Freeman, Locked On Brewers, part of Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you, everydayers, all you everydayers, for following me along on Twitter, Spotify, Apple, Google, all the major downloads. Chuck Freeman, F R E I M U N D. Please follow us on YouTube. I love to hear from you guys. Your comments are great. Okay. May not always agree with them, but man, we're in the same brewer community. We love the brewers. We love a team we grew up with, and the brewers are here to stay. I guarantee you that in this pennant race this coming summer. And I hope you're here for the whole long run because uh, we're going to have a great summer, everybody. Lockdown Brewers, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network. We are your team every day. So long, everybody.